students in this video we will see an important method for preparation of ethers that is williamson's synthesis so this is a method whereby treatment of an alkyl halide has been done with a suitable sodium alkoxide the sodium alkoxide needed for the purpose is prepared by the action of sodium on suitable alcohol as shown okay so you are taking alcohol in presence of sodium and there will be formation of sodium alkoxide with the liberation of h2 right after that as far as this reaction is concerned it involves the nucleophilic displacement that means substitution of the halide ion from the alkyl halide takes place through sn2 mechanism right so you can see here we have sodium alkoxide interacting with an alkyl halide what will happen in this such interaction in case of alkyl halide halogen being a more electronegative element it will pull the electrons towards itself as a result there will be a partial negative charge here partial positive charge on the alkyl group right as soon as the positive charge develops on the alkyl group this alkoxide group is going to attack here resulting in a formation of ether okay and sodium halide will be liberated now this method is useful for the preparation of symmetrical as well as unsymmetrical ethers so you can just consider an example quoted on the screen for the preparation of your unsymmetrical ethers so i am taking sodium tertiary butoxide interacting with methyl bromide right and when you heat it sn2 reaction will work out resulting in a formation of this particular product what is the name of this product it is tertiary butyl methyl ether okay similarly if you want to prepare any kind of symmetrical ether then what you can do in that case in case of alkyl halide the r group which you will be taking as well as the alkyl group attached within the alkoxide molecule should be same so it will result in the formation of an symmetrical ether okay so let's move ahead now now the next important application of williamson synthesis is that it can also be used for the preparation of alkyl aryl ethers also termed as phenolic ethers right so consider an example i am taking sodium phenoxide in this case interacting it with methyl bromide resulting in a formation of anisole which is an phenolic ether okay now as far as this alkyl halides are concerned why we take alkyl halides because halide ions are good living groups however instead of this halides we can also take help of certain sulfates the reason being sulfate is also a good leaving group okay so we can say in williamson synthesis alkyl halides may be replaced by alkyl sulfates so consider an example on the screen we are taking sodium ethoxide interacting it with dimethyl sulfate right again it results in the formation of similarly the procedure will work out and it will result in the formation of an ether okay now after this we'll move towards the limitations of this particular synthesis procedure halogen attached to a double bond or an aromatic ring as in the case of first example where i am showing you with the help of an bromobenzene right so here bromine atom is attached to an aromatic ring right so in such cases what happens is easy displacement with the help of a nucleophilic reagent is not possible okay so because of which aryl halides are not generally used in case of williamson synthesis so as you can observe if i take bromobenzene in presence of sodium ethoxide and heated no reaction is going to proceed that means williamson synthesis will not proceed however if we take the other case that is instead of taking uh, your aryl halides if i take alkyl halides as in the second reaction right so i am taking here sodium phenoxide interacting with ethyl iodide then it will result in the formation of an alkyl aryl ethers so in this case there is a formation of phenetol okay so what is the main concept what is the basic limitation you can understand from this particular first point is reaction can take place between alkyl halide and 
phenoxide ion. However, reaction cannot take place between aryl halide and alkoxides. Okay. However, there is one more uh, like you can just manipulate one more thing here. If the halogen is activated by the presence of electron withdrawing groups as in this particular reaction, what I am doing here is I am taking paranitrobromobenzene. So, bromobenzene has been activated with the help of an electron withdrawing group that is nitro group attached at para position with respect to the halogen, right? So, if the halogen is activated with the help of electron withdrawing groups at ortho and para positions, then such aryl halides get activated and then they can be used in Williamson synthesis. So, in this case, as you can see, paranitrobromobenzene interacts with sodium methoxide and converts into paranitro anisole. Is it okay? Then let's, let's move to the next limitation. As we have seen that this particular Williamson synthesis proceeds through SN2 mechanism, therefore best yields of unsymmetrical ethers are obtained when the alkyl halides are primary since primary alkyl halides are more susceptible to SN2 reactions. Okay, so you can just observe here best hills you can get when there are primary alkyl halides and alkoxides can be primary, secondary or tertiary. Okay, so let us consider an example here. In this first case, we are taking a tertiary alkoxide. Okay, this is interacted with primary alkyl halide. Okay, and on heating, normal SN2 substitution reaction proceeds, the mechanism proceeds and there is formation of tertiary butyl methyl ether okay but however if we take the other case of this whereby instead of taking tertiary alkoxide or instead of preferring for primary alkyl halide if i prefer tertiary alkyl halide let us see what will be the reaction so tertiary butyl bromide which is a tertiary alkyl halide when interacts with sodium ethoxide instead of undergoing substitution reaction as expected in case of Williamson synthesis, it will undergo an elimination reaction in such a way that C2H5O and hydrogen will be released from here, right? Resulting in the formation of an alcohol molecule and due to elimination, there will be a formation of an 2-methyl propene commonly known as isobutylene, okay? Now, this is the main reason. So, what we can say in this case, why we need to take only primary alkyl halides? The main concept is because if we take tertiary alkyl halides or secondary alkyl halides even, it will result in elimination or it will proceed through the elimination mechanism resulting in formation of an alkenes. Again, let us check out for the secondary alkyl halides. So, if I consider this 2-bromopropane, interacting with sodium ethoxide and I am heating this particular system, it will result in formation of 79% propene which is an alkene and 21% formation of 2-ethoxypropene. Okay, so again the reason why secondary alkyl halides undergo preferably elimination reaction and not substitution reaction is due to steric hindrance. Is it clear? So, one the important thing which you can remember in terms of its limitations also is primary alkyl halides are the preferred ones. However, alkoxides can be primary, secondary or tertiary for formation of alkyl aryl ethers or even your any kind of symmetrical and unsymmetrical ethers. Is it clear? That's about Williamson synthesis. Thank you for watching.